So it was 1989 when uh, Hurricane Hugo hit uh, Charleston, South Carolina, and um, a large swath of, of South Carolina. It took out, it hit a portion of the Francis Marion National Forest, which was home to the largest red cockade woodpecker colony in the States at that time. And it knocked down 75% of all standing timber. Uh, red cockade woodpecker are dependent upon cavities inside of live pine trees, and they excavate these cavities themselves. So, you know, with 75% of all standing timber down, they were in real serious trouble and in need of nesting cavities. So I was one of three people that were hired and trained in installing artificial cavities with what we call the, the chainsaw technique where basically you plunge cut a hole in a suitable pine tree that's 20 to 30 feet above the ground level. And we installed what uh, was basically a modified bluebird box, modified to fit red cockade woodpecker and have an extra thick bottom so they wouldn't drill through the bottom too soon. There was another group that was trained in the drill installation technique, and they use gas-powered drills and a series of long drill bits. Their cavities were much more natural but where they could install a cavity every two days, our chainsaw crew could install three or four cavities in a single day. And so to get that immediate need for providing birds with homes, the red cockades with homes, we really, we were the ones, the chainsaw crew was the one carrying uh, the brunt of that. And um, running the chainsaw, doing the plunge cuts, you know, test fit in the box, we would uh, test fit the box until we got it to fit in the hole, and then we would secure it with wood putty, and then we would dress these cavities, right, because we wanted to try to draw the birds in. So we would debark a lot, because that's one of the things the woodpecker does when they make a cavity. They call it scaling, where they go up and they scrape off all the loose bark that's around, and then they dig little tiny holes through the bark called sap wells that gets the sap running and that's what gives that candle-like appearance to these red cockade woodpecker cavity trees where it looks like it's a candle wax almost running down it right it's tree sap so we would try to mimic that and we did that with wood putty we would cut wells and then we would take wood putty after we've scaled the tree and we would rub it two three feet up and down the cavity and you know at first a couple of times that we put one of these in, me and my partner would question, is this really going to work? And literally one day we had just done a cavity. We've just gotten our ladders down and a bird came right in and immediately took over use of that cavity. So it was something that was needed. It was very successful. Um, you know, eventually this became well known enough that it was looked at, well, if, if this is successful in helping red cockade woodpeckers where, you know, we had a natural disaster that affected them. What about in other areas of the state like Texas, Kentucky, where there are red cockade woodpeckers, but they weren't doing real well. So our crew, both drill and the uh, chainsaw crews, were sent here to Texas in the summer of 1990. And we trained folks at both the Crockett and Angelina National Forests in uh, how to put in the, the cavities, both drilling cavities and uh, the chainsaw technique. 